Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and we're bringing Codegasm back. Starting now, I'm here with my buddy and the CEO of Opulent Studios. Oh, I'm not the CEO. You're not the CEO? Who no. is the CEO? Hi. <laughs> That's the CEO. <laughs> she wears the pants apparently. Oh yeah. So today what we're gonna do is in this simple first video, we're gonna show you how to download the free version of Visual Studio Community and what options you need to get it set up and configured to do programming with Unity. Yes. Which is the framework that we're using to distribute this game across multiple platforms. Basically, you can create the game once and put it on just about anything. Anything. You can run it on like a television. Yeah. It's one of the most used frameworks right now for game development. It's actually surprisingly easy to use if you're if you're uh, a seasoned developer. If you're somebody who's never written a piece of software in your life, don't worry, this video is not gonna intimidate you. Neither will any of the other Codegasm series, because one of the things we assume in this video series is that you don't know shit about shit. Well, let's face it, we don't and, know anything either. Well, we don't really know anything <laughs> either. Know I mean, that's we're why talking. we're doing this. It's a learning process. <laughs> but what we're hoping is by the end of the series, no matter what level of developer you are, or if you've never developed before, you get comfortable at least creating something and seeing how it works. And you can, at the end of the day, call yourself a developer. I mean, people might not believe you, but... Hey, everyone's a developer. Everybody's a developer. Yeah. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is Visual Studio 2017. And luckily, Visual Studio 2017 is free. Because Microsoft used to charge a huge amount for a license. Like five grand. It's, it's crazy amounts of money. But then they realized, you know what? The more people that develop for our platform, the more relevant we will stay. And now they're adopting cross-platform also, mm -hmm. which developers, is one of the things. Developers, yeah. developers, developers. Developers, developers, developers. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the best web browser on Earth, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> Lols. Lols. We're going to navigate to visualstudio.com forward slash downloads. That's where you're going to want to go. Uh, or you can just search for Visual Studio on Bing. It'll come up as the first result and you just hit the download button. Now there's multiple versions, like we said. The only free versions are community and code. Now both of those versions have everything we could possibly need for our Unity gaming project. Yep. So you don't have to worry about anything else. Just get the free version. You're just going to run over, click on the free download for Visual Studio Community 2017, and it's going to take you to another page. Don't take the survey and then click save. That's it. And it's going to download a single file to your computer that's small. That's the actual loader that installs everything else. Once it's done, click run and it's going to open up the installer. Just click yes. It's fine. It's signed by Microsoft so we can trust it, right? <laughs> no malware in there. Nope. Yeah, just going to steal all your private information. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click continue and it's gonna go ahead and start preparing to install. Now, don't think Visual Studio is all gonna install from this file. It literally is gonna download about 20 gigs worth of stuff off the internet. So hopefully you have a good internet connection. If you're on a metered connection, this is gonna make you broke. I'm sorry, but hopefully you can make your millions back through game development. They will. They will? Yeah, they will. Pretty much guarantee, right? Guarantee 100%. 100%. All right, so the Visual Studio install screen pops up and you can select everything that you need to install for your Unity development. Or if you wanna do other kinds of development, like in past versions of the Codegasm uh, on my channel, you can go ahead and select whatever components that you need. For this specifically, what we want is the universal Windows platform development, just so we can do C Sharp and all that stuff, .NET development. These aren't necessarily required, but they're things that I wanna have on hand for development that I'm doing in the future. Scrolling on down, we're gonna go ahead and say we want Azure, just in case we wanna do anything with databases in the cloud. But for all intents and purposes for this Codegasm, the one that is most important is game development with Unity. You wanna make sure that box is checked. That is critically important. Now, once those boxes are checked, it says our total download size is about 20.5 gigs. So we're gonna click the install button. It's a lot, a lot of data, a lot of data. So now it's gonna sit here and download and download and download for ages, unless you live in a country that actually has like gigabit everywhere, then this is gonna be like, oh. But we It'll don't. It'll be a long time. It'll be a long time anyway. It's 20 gigs, dude. Now, if you happen to already have Visual Studio installed on your computer and you just want to get the components to develop in Unity, which is what we need for this, just go to unity.com, which they actually just recently acquired that just domain. Just recently. They paid, they paid out the ass for that one. But if you go to the Unity store, unity.com or store.unity.com, there's three versions available. All you need is the personal version. Just click try personal. As long as you make under $100,000 per calendar year from your creations, let's just be honest, most people, I mean, we're never gonna make $100,000 doing this, we're poor people. So, so you don't have to pay for it, you can actually use it. And I know it can be a little misleading when you're first looking at it, it's like, oh, free trial or look at it, it's, it's not. You can completely use it for the rest of your life. Um, come down, you just pick whether you want the Windows version or OS X. And the cool thing is you have to click this button to confirm that you're eligible. Well, you don't actually have to click that box. You just click whatever these and they'll check the box for you. I think it's a bug in their website. Uh, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little Unity framework bug. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's gonna go ahead and download that. Once that's done downloading, all you do is click it, run it. It's gonna install and link to Visual Studio. But if you don't have anything installed, just go to the Visual Studio method and select it in the Visual Studio install. That way it'll make sure everything's wired up properly and all the versions play well together. 
All right, so once you're finished with the install, all you gotta do is click launch on Start Visual Studio now. So now the first thing I wanna tell you right now is most of the work that you do with establishing and setting up the game actually isn't even done in Visual Studio. The code is written here, yeah. but the actual setup of the game and all the graphical components is all done through the Unity UI. So you can just about just close Visual Studio for now. You don't even need to be in here. We wanna open up Unity. We want Unity So first. to open up Unity, all we need to do is double click the icon and put on the desktop right here. All right, this is where the magic happens, folks. This is the good stuff. Now, if you wanna store your projects in the cloud and share them with people and everything like that, you're probably gonna to wanna to create an account. So just click on my account, go through the steps, create an account, log in. And that way you can actually link that and do some of the some of the stuff like the sharing yeah, of files cool. and things like that. They have their own cloud build cloud service build too. Cloud build and like the Git. Yep. GitHub integration and everything. Yep, so for what we're gonna be doing today though, we're just gonna go ahead and create a local project for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and say, I would like a new project. Uh, you also have the choice of creating a 3D or a 2D project. Now for the Quick Splat Barnacles or Quick Splat game that we're gonna be creating uh, during this Codegasm series, we're gonna actually be using 2D, not 3D. Yeah, it's a little easier. It is, but the interesting thing to note here is even when you do 2D, it's all 3D. It's everything's 3D, it's just the view yep. and how it looks in the editor. Yeah, the way that the but, camera looks down. Yeah, so when you're watching 2D, it's literally layers on a 3D yeah. field stacked on top of each other. It's very, it's very cool how they did it because when you go between creating a 2D and a 3D game, there's actually not as much difference as you'd think. Mm -hmm. A lot of the objects are even the same. All right, so let's go ahead and call this project. We're just gonna call it Quick Splat. Quick Splat Barnacles. Quick Splat Barnacles. So it begins. All right, we have to give access to it to everything so we can install its malware components. <laughs> that was a joke. And this will all be on GitHub, we can follow along. So once you have the Unity UI open, you'll see that you have a default view. Now in this default view, since we selected it's a 2D game, it's showing us a 2D play field. Now you can move around with the mouse, you can use the scroll button to manipulate the viewport. You can also hold the control and shift keys and everything to change angles and move around. But one of the neat things to note is this area outside of the line is the world off of the screen of the device. So everything that's on the screen of the device is going to be inside of this box and everything that isn't is on the outside of the box. Now to show you what we meant by 2D and 3D games being very similar, all you have to do inside of the 2D game is switch the viewport between 2D and 3D. Literally nothing else is changing. Even though you created a 2D project, it's still enabled for 3D. You can still create 3D objects yep. in the 2D game. Everything still works. Absolutely. So one of the things that we're gonna do in this video to get you prepped, because this video is all about getting you set up in preparation for the next Codegasm where we actually start coding the game, is Greg has a layout that he's adopted. He's gone through a lot of classes learning Unity. He's been teaching it to me. He doesn't like the default layout. So we're gonna adopt his layout just to make the workflow a little simpler as you guys follow along in the future episodes as we recreate the quick splat game. So what is the first thing we need to do here, Greg, to make this a little bit more accessible? So one of the things I like is, so you have the scene and the game up up top. Yep, and the so two I, separate. So I like to see them both side by side okay. because, because it does show you real time. So you can click and drag that outside and you can snap it. Um, oh, just like Visual Studio, basically. Like Visual Studio. You can just move the components around. Yep, okay. You can kind of see. So then, then you can both see like the game view yep. and the real time view, uh, real time. And the game view is the full screen, what you would see on the device, correct? Yeah, it's, it, a, it's like an emulation, but it's it's really close to exactly what it would look like. Got it, got it. Okay, so now over here, we actually have a hierarchy. On the other side, we have inspector down below. So what what else do you like to add or remove or move around in the scene? So oh. the, the, next thing, the next thing I like to do is I like to move the hierarchy next to the inspector. Okay. And the reason why I do this is uh, a lot of times you, you're dragging and dropping objects from the hierarchy to the inspector. Okay. So, so I want them right next to each other. So gotcha. So you're like not dragging back and forth all the way across all the, the whole way. thing and, and I need them close. That's a good point. Um, and then just because I kind of like Visual Studio and how the project settings is always on the left, I like to drag the project up. Okay. So move uh, the project the right left. up here. And then equal these out. So now the new layout is we can see the game and the scene side by side, yep. which are live, by the way, when you're playing the game. You can act, That's one of the things I love about Unity is you see everything that's happening as in real happening time right as it's running the code and everything. It's beautiful. So now we've got the project over here. Yeah. Uh, do you also change the view? Yeah, there's there's two views. So there's this like side by side view, which mm -hmm. has like these like search folders and all that. I'm not really, I don't really like this look. So you right click the, the project tab on top. Oh, right click on the project tab. And go to one column layout. One column layout. Okay, and then this will be all the assets this for the project. This is just more standard, like, a, yep. like an explorer view. All right, so inside of your project, you can start creating things like folders and adding objects and dragging in assets like 3D models and uh, sprites and sounds and everything that you want. Uh, you like to keep things neat and tidy. So yeah, you it's would really have, like, important. Images. Yeah. Like, as you get like more than five or six files, if you don't have folders in there, you lose them all. Yep. So like you'd have like sa images, sounds, uh, you'd have scenes and uh, scripts. like scripts. Okay. And then like what? 3D models. 
if you if you wanted to incorporate them in. Yeah, there's like models or animations. Let's do animations. And in future episodes, we're going to be putting everything into these folders and keeping it very segmented. So it's easy when we're moving around not to confuse you guys and and more importantly, not to confuse ourselves. Confuse us, yeah. Okay, so uh, also one other thing to keep in mind, too, is that the game has already been created and it is in beta testing now. We've already selected our beta testers for Android. We're going to be selecting beta testers for iOS coming up. And at the end of this video, we're going to give you a demo of the final game. Now, the game that we're developing in this series is going to be similar to that game, but not exactly the same because we're literally recreating it from scratch yes. and we're avoiding the really complicated stuff so that we can show you the things that is a non-professional software developer you can feel confident and playing with and having some fun that's what we're focusing on yeah and then there's also a couple other things on like to ship a game like for the leaderboards yeah for the like like we're not going to do all that because there's a lot of like setup the integration and setting up a jewel yeah. and databases and stuff yeah we're going to try to avoid all that so that at the end of this series and we don't know how many episodes it'll be it just depends on how long it takes, long it takes. to build this thing this is a brand new experience in code gas we've never done a game before we've only done apps before but as we progress through this we're hoping that by the end that you feel confident at any level of development skill or to be quite honest have no development skill that you are comfortable in manipulating the game, adding your own graphics and sounds and playing with it and making it your own. All right, one thing I like to do is dragging the console down just a little bit right here to give us some more space up here in the display. And also when we're developing the game, you can change the aspect ratio of the world and everything depending on the devices you're targeting. Uh, there is a lot of flexibility in what you can do. But the most important thing at this point is after you've gone through the trouble of setting up this layout, make damn sure that you save it. If you don't, and, you, and this happens to me so much, if you close Unity right now and open it back up, your layout just goes back to default. to default. You have to, and there's a couple little weird quirks with Unity like this. You have to come up here to the corner where it says defaults. You gotta pull it down and say save layout. We're gonna call it codegasm layout. Now make sure after you saved it that it's up there. Now you can see codegasm layout. Now, if you didn't do that and you closed it, you're screwed. Well, you just gotta redo it. Well, you gotta redo it. But if you have to do that every time, that's gonna piss you off. Trust me, it did me. Now up here, you can change between all the different layouts. There's tons of default layouts that you can go in depending on what you're doing, whether you're debugging the game, whether you're playing it, uh, stuff like that. But generally speaking, the layout that we just created works pretty good for everything. Yeah, and it works really good on like when you have one screen. Yeah. With these three screens, I would like drag this across all of them and like for reals, but... That's actually <laughs> like, true. This is a, That's actually true. Yeah. I have three. I have three yeah. fifty-inch screens. I yeah. could probably have one be the entire game preview, another one be debug. And that's the nice thing is you can actually yeah. drag these off, and these could be completely off on separate screens. And that's right, because you can do that in Visual Studio too, couldn't yeah. you? So, so yeah. What what, what Greg is saying here is it's we can go ahead and minimize that. this down. Let's say we just want to take the scene and we just want to move it out here. The scene can actually be its own detached window, so you can put it on any screen that you want, presumably. So now if I wanted, I could totally move this over to one of my other three screens yeah. and then I would always know that's where to look and then I have more room for my code and stuff. Yeah, so like, like if, if you have this awesome setup, you would definitely like spread it out. But most people don't. They have one one monitor and... Oh, this, oh most most people don't have three 50-inch 4K screens? Okay, well, I do too, but... <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have mirrored setups. Now, if you manage to screw up the layout and you add something where you didn't want to or you remove it, you can't figure out how to get it back. As long as you don't save the layout again, it will always go back to the old one. So, for instance, if I change the default and I go back to Codegasm, it's always going to go back to this. So, let's say I drag the scene out and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, how to get that out there? Oh, that sucks. Just come over here, go back to code guys. You don't have to switch another one. Just click on it again. Boom, you're right back where you started. Uh, there's a lot of little quirks in the Unity UI you're going to learn throughout the series and stuff that you have to do and ways of loading things. It's not always intuitive, but once you figure out a few of the little quirks, you're going to realize that the workflow for creating a game is much simpler, I guarantee, than you were expecting. But it's still a lot of yeah, work. Still a lot, lot of work. work. I mean, work. not for me, for Greg. For me, I just make little fart noises into the microphone. I mean, look at me. I haven't slept in like three weeks. A lot of what you do in Unity is literally drag and drop. So I have a couple of graphics I just put on my desktop from my Barnacles Nerdgasm collection. And we're just going to go ahead and grab one of those and we're going to drag it over into the images folder under project. So now if we expand that, we have my Barnacles avatar here. Now we want to add that to the scene. And the way that you do that is by dragging it under the hierarchy for the scene. Right now the scene is called Untitled. We can change that name if we want to. But I'm just going to drag it over and I can literally just dump it right here in the hierarchy. And there you go. You got my image that is in the scene. If I push this play button up here, if you push this little play button, that is literally the game right now. It is, it is running. If you you could build this as an executable right now, and if somebody opened this app on their phone, they would get a beautiful caricature picture of me. Ship it. Ship it. Like, there you go. Right there. It's like that old diamond game on iOS that was $999.
Same difference, only prettier. You only need one person to buy it. Only need one person to buy it. One person to screw up and be drunk and hit that button and you're set. Now, every single object that you add to a game, whether it be an image or whether it be a sound or whether it be a 3D model, they all share certain aspects in the world of Unity. And that is you can add a script to them or any number of scripts that control yeah. what the object does. This is where you actually write the code and where Visual Studio comes in. And what you do is you just come over here and you select it. So I got Barnacle's avatar. I'm just gonna say add a component, okay? And to add a script, you literally just type anything that's not in there that's a script. So I could just type, uh, let's see, what is this? Avatar script. And then just hit enter. That's going to create a new script. You can select your language. We're doing everything in C Sharp on this, but you can do it in JavaScript yeah. if you want to. I prefer C Sharp, though. So let's go ahead and create an add. It's powerful. It's give you more. Much, much more powerful. All right. So once you add the script to your object, you just double click it. And once you double click, it's gonna open Visual Studio. That's where Visual Studio comes in. All of the code that you write for all of the objects in Unity is done in Visual Studio, but all of the connections and tie together and animations and all that stuff, for the most part, is done through the Unity UI. So there is go a lot of back and forth when you're doing this. Now, one of the cool things is when it opens up in Visual Studio, it gives you a little bit of code right off the bat for this object. It created this avatar script object. And it has a start function that gets called when when it starts. That's literally what it is. And every single time it updates, the update method gets called. There's a lot more you can do here, but these are the basics. Yeah, and this is the default template mm -hmm. that comes with Unity. You can actually go and change this. Let's say, let's, oh, let's say you know that you always use these ten functions. And yep. You, on every class, you can go and change the editor. That, That's awesome. That template, and then you just get whatever you want. So every time you create a new script, yeah. you automatically have the most. The functions you use the most. Yeah. Okay. So like for that instance, might actually be a good thing to show in, in one of these. We're, we're going to have to show that as we yeah, progress. Know, you're not going to get it in this episode, but you're going to yeah. see it. But just to give you an example of what's going on, let's say we want to hide the object right after it starts, right? So we're just going to write a little bit of code inside the start. We're going to say this dot game object, which is a reference to myself. I'm basically saying I am the script for this object. I want to do something to it. And I'm going to change it from set active from true to false. Just like that. That one piece of code. Now I'm going to save it. So I'm going to just do alt FS. Now I'm saved, or you could just do control S. I'm gonna go ahead and go back here and we're gonna push the play button. And now the object's gone. gone. So, so we just wrote a little bit of code. So our game right now is just to have the object manifest and, dis and, and hide, basically. <laughs> And so like really what you're doing, so anything you can do over here in the editor, you can do in the code. Yep. So see how there's that little checkbox next to your name up in the inspector? Yep, right up here in the inspector. So that's the active state. So okay. essentially what you did is you told Unity to uncheck that box. Right, so if I wanna mess with say the transform or the sprite render, or the avatar, or it's not the script, that's our script. But if I wanna mess with any of these aspects I add to the object, I can do that through the scripts. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, adding a component. Yeah, you can do that. Like if we wanted to add something to the image, like here, like what, what would be an example? You have effects, you have, let's add some physics to it, right? We sure. can just make a drop. Let's say, okay, so physics 2D, let's go ahead and add a rigid body. So that basically means we're going to take this image and make it a physical thing that can collide with things in the world. Now, the other thing is you have to make a collider so that it knows that it can encounter and, and hit other objects. So we're just going to start with a box collider 2D. Make sure you select the items that are 2D. Unless you're making a 3D game, you're going to have a lot of problems if you select the 3D colliders. I mean, you can use the 3D colliders in the 2D object. You shut your dirty whore mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only the only thing that, that they don't, they don't interact with each other. So okay. let's, let's say you had a 3D collider and a 2D yep. collider. They would not collide. I got you. So, so if, if, you, if you're going to use all 2D, it has to be all 2D. If you're going to use all 3D, it has to be all 3D. I got you. Or unless if you wanted to have like two, like let's say you had a weird scenario where you wanted. Because it is technically yeah, 3D. You, it's just a 2D to your point. Yeah. So you could have 3D objects interact with the colliders. Yeah. It's just going to look interesting because you're on a 2D plane. And so it's like, it okay. Like, yeah. okay. So now that we've got the rigid body 2D and the collage, we're just adding these to the object. That's all we're doing. We're dragging them in. Also, when you create a scene, you need to make sure that in addition to saving your project, you also save the scene. If you don't save the scene, you're going to lose it. And that's kind of one of the weird quirks with Unity is you need to make sure you save the project and the scene. They, they're, they're, they're different different types of objects. So we're going to go into our scenes folder and we're just going to say the call it the my face scene. That's good enough. So it's the my face scene. So now that we've added the rigid body 2D and the box collider to it, that means that the rigid body means it's it interacts with the world and it has mass and drag and all the characteristics of an object in yeah. in a physical world. And it means uh, it's a rigid body, not like a squishy body like us. Are there squishy bodies in there? Not yet, but that's, not yet. That, I, I never knew what the rigid body is. It means it doesn't like morph. It's like static. Oh, it's, a, it's like a rigid. It's mm -hmm. like a rigid object. Yeah, I'll show you my the, rigid object. Yeah. <laughs> so so once you have a rigid body, meaning that it's basically an object that doesn't change form, right? It's as it was. Yeah. 
Uh, then you have to add the box collider so that it has boundaries so other things can collide into it. What's going to happen when I hit play is it's just going to automate. It's going to fall. Gravity is just going to take over and it's going to fall. And you can see over in the scene, it actually falls outside of the view area and keeps going. As a matter of fact, I can probably zoom this out and we can still see the oh, item no. falling for eternity right here until we remove it from the world. So now if I select Barnacle's avatar, I can actually move it around the scene. So if I want to make a game and I want to start it up here, it's going to fall, right? No matter what, it's going to fall because we've assigned it those physical characteristics of the world. Yeah. Or we can make it static. If we want it to stay put, we can still have it be a static object. Like, for instance, let's just make this a static object right here. We're going to say, come over here to the rigid body. That's where it has its mass and drag and angular drag and gravity. You don't have to know anything about physics to, to do this. You can Not literally really. go in and just tweak around the numbers and figure things out to get it to your liking. So under here, we're going to change it to a static object. And all that means now is when we hit the play button, it's going to remain static. It's still going to be able to collide with other objects. It's still going to have a mass. It's just not going to move from its current location. It's we're lodging it in the world. So we're going to make a copy of this now. We're just going to control C, control V. And now we have a Barnacles avatar too. And we're going to drag this one up. Now this one, we're going to remove that property from. We're going to go back and say that you are now a dynamic object. So the top one is dynamic. This one's static, which means this is going to fall because this has weight sure. and it's going to collide with this one. So let's go ahead and hit the play button. And there it is. It just falls down. We could even come in here and do things like let's assign it more properties. Let's say uh, it has a mass of 0 0.2. So it's very lightweight. I don't know. I think you have more mass than that. <laughs> Shut up. I hate you. <laughs> so uh, you can also you also have a gravity scale. If you want to change the scale of gravity throughout how the object interacts with everything else, you can even assign materials to make things bouncy. So now we want to create a material. So we're going to right click on the material folder. We're going to say create a new material 2D, physics material 2D, right here. And then we're going to just call this uh, head. What's our head material? <laughs> you usually want to give head. <laughs> oh my God, the innuendos just flow so freely here. All right, so under head, we're going to give it a friction and bounciness. We're going to say it has a bounciness of 0 0.5 and a friction of 0 0.4. Now we want to apply this material to the second head, the one on top here. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. We're gonna say, go in there under box collider. So you just come down here, you click the little tiny button next to the material associated with it, and then go under your assets, and there's our head material that we just created. Now we've assigned the head material. Now what's gonna happen now when we hit play is the head's gonna fall and presumably bounce sure. off of the other object. Let's see what happens. We got some bounce, right? That was some decent bounce. And by altering the material, because everything is connected, if we come over here and just open up the material, and we say, okay, we want a bounciness of one. That's just going to make it re retain 100% of its energy. So with regard to friction, it should just keep bouncing about the same and sure. slowly lose momentum. So let's go ahead and save that. Here we go. Boing, boing. Okay. Bounce, bounce, bounce. It's actually gaining a little bit each time, isn't it? We didn't even really write any code at all. Like we, we messed around a little bit with activating and deactivating the object, but this is all just adding properties. So now we're ready to build this thing and make it executable and give it to our friends to play on their PC. Or if you want to build it for a phone and distribute it to like an Android phone or a TV or something like that, we have to build the project now. So we go over to file and we're going to go down to build settings and under build settings, we can select what we want to build it for. Do we want it for Mac? Do we want it for iOS? Do we want to run it on an Apple TV or an Android or a Tizen, whatever the hell that is, or a PS Vita <laughs> or a WebGL or a Samsung TV or even a Facebook app? Let's say we want this to be the next big Facebook game, right? Because it's pretty damn amazing. I it's mean, pretty it, cool. it is my likeness. I play it. So <laughs> you play it. So now we need to do is we need to add the scenes that we want to build. So we're going to say add open scenes, and that's going to add my face scene. Now the scenes, think of them like levels. They're like different, menu, like a different menu could be seen. It's basically a composition of all the items and how they interact with each other or a scene. Think of it like a tab in, uh, in Photoshop, yeah, if right. you will, kind of. So what we're going to do is we're going to take my face and we're going to build it for PC and we're going to target Windows and we want to build it so it runs on x86 and x64. And if we want symbols for debugging and stuff, we can check numerous boxes. But all we want to do is we just want to build it and run it. We've got to save it somewhere. Where do we want to save the exe? We're going to put it under Quick Spat Barnacles. Actually, we'll just put it in the root directory. Quick spot, Arnold There we go. Save. Quick spot demo. We are now building. It's going and taking all the assets, all the Visual Studio code or lack, lack thereof, and building it together into a single executable that you could then give to anybody. That's probably going to set off every malware detector and nobody on the internet would run if you sent it to them. Now you'll notice because I rendered it for PC, it brings up this quick splat Barnacles configuration. This is so you can select what resolution you want to play at. Uh, let's say we want to play at 4K and use up all the real estate, the graphics quality. Do we want low settings, ultra settings? We didn't have to do anything to get this. This is free. Oh, Unity, okay. Unity just builds this some bitch in. We can even say we want it windowed. Let's say we want to run it windowed at uh, 1280 by 760, right? We're going to go in here and you can limit these options too if you, in the code. You can actually change it so that there's certain things you can select and other things you can't. Uh, under input, you can even map all of the keys 
that you're going to use for input and stuff. We're going to cover all of this stuff in future episodes as we develop the quick splat game. And here is our game, guys, that we just created in Unity just by dragging and dropping a graphic and changing a couple of properties. This is an executable that you're running. You could give this to anybody. You could email it to somebody. Granted, the spam filter might hit you up pretty hard for an XE. Put in a zip file first. Yeah, don't don't email .exe. Don't, don't email .exe's. <laughs> Nobody's going to open them. But uh, but basically, we built this. And what we want to show you in this first episode is one the tools that you have to have installed, the options that you have to select, and kind of give you just a quick demo of how you can throw to something together really quick without writing any code, but still show you that you can write code on the back end to manipulate it. And a lot of what we're going to be doing in the future game is going to be a combination of animations and graphics and sounds inside of Unity and the code to coordinate them in Visual Studio and the merger of the two. So during this series, we're going to be making a game very similar to this Quick Splat game. This is the one that we're going to be releasing on Android and iOS soon, guys. But we're going to show you guys how to program something very similar. So let's go ahead and uh, show you what it's like. So you got to come through here, click on all the Barnacleses and none of the trolls. You don't want to click the troll. Oh, there's a troll. Don't want to hit him. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, speeding up. Jelly. Sweet. Rad. Rad. Titties. Oops. Oh. Continue five coins. Oh. I got to watch an ad. <laughs> That's how we get you. So that's about it, right? Sounds good to me. All right, guys. Well, stay tuned for Codegasm episode number two. We're going to actually start developing the game Quick Splat. And just to let you guys know, at the end of every episode, it will be buildable code and it will be able to work. You'll be able to touch the screen or do something with it to manipulate it. And we're going to be publishing it to GitHub. So each one of those episodes, you'll be able to actually go download the project and play along if you don't want to code everything along with us. So a lot of options. It's going to be a fun ride. We have no idea how many episodes it's going to be, but I think it's going to be quite a few. Like 300. Like 300 episodes. <laughs> but in the end, you guys are going to be awesome game developers. You're going to make millions and millions of dollars on every marketplace. And you're going to send some of that to us, right? Bitcoins. They should have Bitcoins. We Bitcoin want Bitcoin address in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitcoin address <laughs> in the video description. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Next Codegasm, keep an eye out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's critically important to your survival. Did you like this video? Push the like button and leave a comment and come see me live on Twitch TV forward slash Barnacles Monday through Friday, possibly Saturday and Sunday or whenever the hell I feel like doing it. Okay, just do it. Links in the description. Can't spell Barnacles. Ain't my problem. Just come watch me. Sometimes I take my shirt off even. You know you want to see that. It's awesome. <laughs>